very good afternoon myself uh, ganesh valmiki i'm happy to be here today and uh, uh, i'm going to share uh, all the relevant information as per uh, today's topic that's on uh, f1 visa so prior to that i just would like to introduce uh, my company so myself ganesh valmiki i am the chairman and managing director from valmiki group hyderabad so we have been into overseas education for the past 13 years and myself uh, i have got uh, close to 15 years of experience on overseas education so today i am glad to share uh, all the experiences of our uh, previous students and uh, today's uh, the main uh, topic is going to be on student visas and i'm sure many of you who have enrolled for uh, today's webinar are definitely going to uh, approach the us embassy uh, to apply for your student visas for the fall intake so the main uh, topics are uh, the documentation procedures while applying for student visas and uh, the categories and followed by the do's and don'ts and uh, the faqs part and followed by i will be happy to take up uh, you know as many questions as possible if at all you have any individual questions as such as you know that in us if any student wants to you know pursue his further studies he need to apply for a student visa in student visas there are different categories again because basically student visas they fall under non immigrant visa categories uh in student visas you also find uh, different types of student visas one is uh, f1 visa uh, j1 visa and m1 visa so basically m1 and j1 is not applicable for every student those who are applying for occasional courses and uh, the student exchange program they fall under uh, uh, m1 and j1 most of the students who have opted uh, for the bachelors or masters or for that matter phd so where the duration of the course is uh, above one year i should say uh they they are all fall under f1 student uh, visa category under f1 visa obviously uh, you know f1 visa falls under uh, non immigrant visa category that's where uh, student uh, need to really know the actual uh, uh, procedures while up applying for uh, the student visas and i have a couple of ppts which i'm just uh, going to show you right now and uh, then followed by then i'll carry on with the presentation uh prior to that <clears throat> about our company as i already mentioned uh, that we are established in the year 2001 <clears throat> and we are known in the market as a us specialist and uh, so we have got a lot of credentials and uh, we do represent uh, many state and public universities across us uk australia and canada and uh, we are the, we are we also have the memberships uh, with uh, nafsa isf ciec <clears throat> and uh, ari also as you're all aware that uh, when you are applying for a student visa uh, you need to procure an admission letter it is nothing but an i20 copy uh, issued by the uh, uh, registered university in us and obviously uh, there are thousands of uh, schools in us i'm sure m some of you have already holding the admit letters and uh, the i20s from the respective universities those who are about to you know appear for uh, student visas and uh, some students are still awaiting the admission letters from the respective universities as you're all aware that uh, us has got thousands and thousands of schools uh, you know the accredited institutions if you look at there are close to 5000 plus uh, you know universities across uh, united states as you know us is even today ranked as the number one education destination and compared to all other countries so even today the international student population if you look at there are close to 7 lakh uh, you know 80000 international students as per the 2012 statistics shows and obviously the students from india if you look at the current 
Indian students who have enrolled with American uh, universities, it is close to uh, 1 lakh Indian students. And of course, China is, is in the leading uh, list where highest number of international students are from China right now and uh, followed by India and followed by a few other Asian countries also. So obviously, the reason why many students to choose U.S. because of the quality of education, the standard of education and followed by many more opportunities uh, with, with regard to funding and scholarships are concerned. So there are a lot of uh, Indian students are successful in getting uh, more grants and followed by the research and uh, teaching assistantships also. And uh, as my focus is going to be today more on uh, student visas, those who have already been uh, admitted for the fall 2013 intake, that's for August and September intake. So where uh, there are a lot of myths in fact uh, with regard to student visas where I would like to really, uh, you know, share uh, more information. So with regard to the documentation process, I just would like to uh, first uh, explain about the documentation procedures, then probably I can, uh, uh, you know, cover the other subjects. Next. Yeah. So with regard to student visa, F1 visa, you need to first apply for a web appointment. Uh, and uh, so I'm sure I, I'm not going to uh, focus more on the web appointment procedures as such. I'm sure many of you have already got the, you know, even uh, visa and through date confirmations. But definitely you will have to be very cautious while filling up the uh, DS-160 form. That's where <clears throat> there are a lot of technical questions where leisurely you need to focus on and uh, fill up very carefully. You will have to you'll have to be very truthful while filling up the DS form actually. So this plays a vital role and you'll have to provide all the personal information followed by <clears throat> the university which you have opted for. And as you're all aware that the current uh, student visa fees is $160 wherein uh, you can uh, go to Access Bank or you know HDFC Bank where you, you'll have to just pay the visa fees and uh, procure a receipt through which you can uh, log on to the uh, you know student visa site that is consulate site and you can just uh, you know book an appointment where first you'll have to uh, procure a, an appointment even for the fingerprinting process then later you should go for the main uh, you know interview, interview date actually so prior to that you should also pay the service fees I think you're all aware about the service fees student exchange visitors information this is a portal designed by the Homeland Security wherein uh, uh, towards the maintenance of international students data actually so this $200 is mandatory and this fees validity is for uh, uh, one year and in fact uh, whichever the uni university you have been granted and the particular school you have decided you know to apply for that particular school where for a visa interview so obviously you'll have to you know pay this service fees and procure the receipt also and uh, through online also you can do that and you, you need to have that uh, you know original form the duly filled of DS 160 and you should have original passport with you <clears throat> and uh, the original I-20s not only the university which you have already decided and apart from the other schools where you have been granted admission so even those schools also you can you can uh, you know uh, th those universities <clears throat> other I-20s also you need to carry those admits also and if at all for that particular university you have been granted some sort of funding or scholarships so you've got that scholarship letter with you uh, and uh, some sort of assistantships which is not mentioned you know in your I-20 form so then I recommend you to please carry those even the uh, the acceptance letters also so as we have talked we have spoken about the I-20 part and uh, please do even uh, carry the other schools where you have been granted admissions and also you need to carry your ETS scores they are uh, TOEFL, GRE, if at all you are opting for the masters in uh, engineering uh, programs or uh, uh, the non-management courses obviously you, you one need to have a GRE score and uh, your TOEFL score or ILTS score sheet and followed by if at all you are opting for uh, MBA so I'm sure you must have opted for GMAT uh, examination and uh, followed by if at all those who are with the 10 plus 2 background who are applying for the uh, bachelor's program so obviously you need to have your SAT scores so you, you should uh, carry all your ETS uh, score scorecards and uh, followed by uh, the affidavit of support duly signed and uh, the sponsors documents with regard to the 
financial documents are concerned of course it's not on the slide we have not mentioned that part you need to carry with the financial documents also so with regard to finances are concerned there is always a confusion a lot of students have so many doubts with regard to financial documentation as you know that you need to have the liquid funds in hand when you are approaching the embassy the visa officer if you look at the f1 visa rejections there are a lot of students visas have been denied based on uh, fact, certain factors one is 214b the main visa rejection reason is 214b 214b shows prospective immigrant if you fail to convince the visa officer that you will come back to india and you have not shown strong credentials you have not shown uh, strong roots with a home country there is always a possibility that there are some students visas are denied on the reason uh, on the basis of 214b the other reason is 221g reason 221g shows insufficient documentation or uh, improper documentation and you also have uh, sub categories in that like uh, uh, in uh, poor english proficiency followed by uh, you know there are sub categories actually but the main reasons are 214b uh, there is a most common rejections where students are uh, being rejected next uh, 221g reason then followed by 212a uh, that's very rarely happens suppose if at all there is a misrepresentation or if any student has carried a fraudulent documents or uh, you know the student has not been truthful to the visa officer there are certain occasions where we have seen you know students visas are denied on these uh, you know re reasons basically 214b 221g reason and uh, 212a so you have to be definitely be well prepared and uh, also with regard to the documentation process you will have to really work hard and have a proper planning actually with regard to the financial documents are concerned so obviously you need to show the liquid funds suppose if at all let us say you are you are carrying an admit letter for the masters course maybe say computer science with the tuition fee of, of for a particular school of yours say is around twenty two thousand dollars and the living expenses say on an average twelve thousand dollars so the total fees would be thirty six thousand dollars for one year we recommend the students uh, you know to if possible to even show the two years funding actually even though as per the norms maybe one year tuition fee would suffice <clears throat> if not uh, even uh, the students can even show one and a half year to two years uh, tuition fee also in the form of liquid funds uh, these liquid funds if you would like to show you have to definitely have uh, a savings account with the proper transactions from a nationalized bank or international bank and uh, the sponsors for your student visa can be your parents and your uh, siblings and uh, even even grandparents or even aunt and uncle also if at all you are a self sponsor then obviously you need to have all the relevant documents that you know you have been a working employee but otherwise most of the students they show the primary sponsors as parents and followed by the siblings also like you know brothers or sisters or you know and uh, you know you can even uh, if you have any overseas sponsors even that also can be shown suppose if you tell you have an uncle or aunt in us or maybe canada for that matter or even uk for that matter any other country so you can even take take the show the overseas sponsorship but obviously the visa officer should get convinced that you are financially sound and you have uh, you know sponsors who are uh, financially you know sound in in order to you know support your education actually and if at all you have been granted any scholarship or internships obviously you should definitely present that to the visa officer uh, in the form of documentation and uh, apart from bank statements even students can even secure education loans <clears throat> and uh, the education loans can be 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs how how much money you are in fact um, you are based on your mortgage or properties and as you know that uh, credila we do strongly recommend for many students to approach credila to utilize their services as uh, credila loan sanction letters are widely accepted by all the consulates in india and not only for us even for uk australia and canada and for other countries also so you need to really procure that education loan sanction and followed by uh, the uh, if at all you have liquid funds in the savings account or you have in the form of fixed deposits or in the form of provident funds and followed by even the 
uh, parents' uh, PF money also can be shown actually. And with regard to annual income, whoever is, the, whoever is sponsoring your education, so one need to have uh, the income documents, income certificates in the form of uh, income tax return. Suppose if at all your dad and mom, they are into a business, you have a family business, then you need to carry the income tax returns of your business income, uh, three years income tax returns. And also <clears throat> you can even, uh, if at all your father is a government employee or uh, he is working for some company, so you need to carry three years income tax returns and uh, followed by if at all you have some agricultural income so you can even ca carry the you know agricultural income also so there are various types of uh, you know uh, income proof basically so you'll have to definitely ask your parents what is the source of income you have so accordingly you need to carry all the relevant documents and it has to be genuine documents so apart from liquid funds you'll have to carry the income proof certificates and followed by the properties whatever you have the properties as such they don't go in depth but still you need to carry a civil engineering certificate as such where uh, it is showing the the actual amount of pro immobile properties you have in the form of houses or buildings or uh, or the agricultural lands or the commercial property whatever you have so you should have a civil engineering certificate for that so basically the financial documents can be divided into four categories the one category is liquid funds the liquid funds are nothing but your uh, savings account money, fixed deposits money, or even the education loan amount falls under savings money, uh, liquid funds. So the one category is uh, liquid funds. The second category is uh, annual income. The annual income part, which I've explained to you. Then the third category would be uh, the immobile properties. Whatever the properties you have, you need to carry a civil engineering certificate with all the Xerox copies of your property papers, and followed by <coughs> uh, the mobile properties. Mobile properties sometimes students do show, uh, say, uh, maybe the the uh, the vehicles what you have, then uh, the machinery, the jewelry part, that also can be shown actually. But these are all not mandatory as such. The visa officers' focus would be more on your liquid funds and the sponsors' background. So they'll be more concerned. That's why we always recommend students where the primary sponsors have to be the parents and uh, the siblings and followed by the grandparents and and if, if it can be even uncle and aunt also so the self sponsorship point of view so obviously you need to carry your own uh, you know uh, it, it returns and uh, strongly convince the visa officer uh, with all the relevant documents actually so with regard to documentation you'll have to really prepare well and uh, much in advance and uh, see to it that as per the uh, visa officers expectations so you'll have to carry all the relevant documents as I mentioned I'll just repeat uh, the web appointment letter the service receipt and the application duly signed uh, DS form the original passport then your original I-20 signed by you then ETS scores <clears throat> then uh, affidavit of supports which are not mandatory but we do recommend students and the financial documents then uh, all your academic uh, documents right from your 10th onwards 10th 10 plus 2 if you're bachelor student bachelors year wise memos and even the consolidated marks memos if at all you have for the freshers I'm sure many of you have just written the final semester exams <clears throat> maybe you can carry till seven semesters marks memos and uh, for the bachelor uh, all the academic documents and if you have any extracurricular activities yes you are welcome to carry the documents and followed by all the financial relevant documents actually so there's nothing much about the uh, visa documentation procedures but definitely I will be happy to look into the, your queries and uh, then probably clarify what are the doubts you have and coming to the the visa interview part as you know that you one need to face the visa interview uh, you know with a visa officer and uh, the duration of the visa interview can be short duration or it can be you know long duration that, that will be decided by the visa officers actually so but uh, in most of the cases we have seen the duration of the uh, the visa session would, would, would last for maybe say sometimes two three minutes or some in some cases we have seen five minutes in some cases even we have seen uh, students have been uh, you know even grilled for uh, close to 15 minutes or 30 minutes in some cases we have seen even 40 minutes also so you should be prepared whether it's a short interview or a long interview and one need to have proper uh, preparation while you are uh, you know appearing for the visa interview so we do come across some students 
having interview phobias and some students you know they really you know don't project well and maybe sometimes vague answers and they are not precise they are not clear with their uh, you know answers and that's how they are being denied where the visa officer is not as satisfied with the student answers so basically the most important strategies which you need to keep in mind is uh, it should be point to point answers you will have to maintain the eye contact of the visa officers and uh, your answer should be very precise and it should be crystal clear the clarity is needed with your answers and you must avoid unsolicited information so that's not all uh, uh, this thing we do recommend uh, you know students to avoid unsolicited information and uh, you'll have to be uh, like you no know, uh, rigid and uh, point to point answers and uh, the most commonly asked questions from the visa officers would be why only us why only this university how many schools did you apply how did you apply to this university this these universities how many admits and how many rejects and uh, about your specialization there will be definitely a few more many more questions about your specialization then with regard to your career goals are concerned i mean uh, they definitely want to know what exactly you're going to do after uh, you know a completion of your bachelor's or masters so the visa officer will be keen to know about your uh, you know career goals are concerned and uh, your uh, how ambitious you are and followed by your sponsors background and uh, even uh, the questions related how well uh, you are going to i mean in the sense uh, whether you are going to show strong roots with the home country or not even that also matters a lot the other questions will be more about your university specialization the course curriculum and uh, even the faculty background and uh, even uh, the the location of your university the kind of research uh, taking place over there and uh, even uh, the 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 weather conditions they would like to know so you will have to definitely do lots and lots of homework and but definitely end of the day you will have to be very truthful to the visa officer and you should not hide any wrong information as such so for example if you have some uh, if you have a sibling in united states it can be a sister or brother so you have somebody in us where you know uh, you you would like to hide that information so basically we do recommend students not to do that actually you have to be truthful you have to definitely you know uh, mention if at all you have a brother or sister in in united states or if you are an uncle or you have uh, blood related uh, relatives so you have to be uh, specific and you have to definitely you know uh, say that you have so and so and so people and uh, followed by other questions will be, will be related to your uh, uh, professor's background sometimes and uh, next thing is uh, they will definitely ask you the questions with regard to your project work what you have done in india and if at all you have any gaps after completion of your bachelor's or you know a masters so obviously you have to bridge the gap and you have to definitely uh, be genuine and uh, truthful again what have you been doing after completion of your studies and uh, you put all whatever the project work you have done so that part you have to definitely uh, highlight and uh, with regard to your scores uh, gre tofel there is always a possibility that if at all you have ended up getting a less scores then you need to justify why is that you you have been a grand i mean why 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 did you get a less scores in uh, gre and tofel so you have to justify to the visa officers and uh, mainly they are going to look into your university the accreditation and the background of the university really plays a vital role so you will have to be very clear and uh, specific about uh, the the university what you have taken up and why you have chosen that university so or uh, what for uh, like you know you are you are going for that school and followed by the specialization the course curriculum then faculty background and followed by uh, whatever the questions they are going to ask you so you should be prepared so the most commonly asked questions which i have shared with you already so you while definitely prepare, you know facing the interview so you will have to really really you know give uh, uh, logical answers and you will have to really justify to the visa officer you know rather than giving vague answers by hearted answers and sometimes you know many students you know they are into blogs and they try to share lots and lots of exchange lots of information 
but they try to buy hard the answers. So you are, your, your answers have to be very unique. You know, for, the, for example, I would like to share that suppose if they ask you this question called why only this university? Say for example, you have uh, uh, applied for the University of Southern California or maybe say for example Texas A&M College Station. So you have to definitely justify if the visa officer asks you that why have you chosen Texas A&M College Station? Why have you opted for you know Southern California? So you will have to really justify by highlighting about the ranking of the university then you should uh, talk about the accreditation part of the particular school then you will have to definitely tell about the faculty background the kind of research taking place in that university that really matters a lot that's where you will have to do lots of uh, groundwork in a sense lots of homework about your school about your specialization and uh, followed by the future prospects for your specialization that's very very important actually there are a lot of students <clears throat> they do give very vague answers with regard to specialization point of view even the career goals are concerned you will have to show strong roots with the home country but I'm sure they, if they ask you this question that will you be coming back to India after completion of studies many students try to bluff yes uh, after completion of my studies I'll come back to India immediately obviously uh, the visa officers don't get convinced if at all you have a genuine intention of staying back in the United States would like to really ex get an international exposure for a couple of years or you know so you have to be truthful as you know that every student visa is granted for five years by the visa officers so five years multiple entry you will get whether you go for bachelors or you go for two years master duration or in any other course where every student is given an opportunity to go for OPT so I'm sure you're aware about OPT so it's optional practical uh, training so wherein you will have to really you know you will have an opportunity to work on on, on OPT uh, uh, as a full time uh, you know you know employee after completion of your studies wherein uh, after, earlier it was 22 months now the OPT tenure has been increased to 29 months so wherein uh, you have an opportunity to work in United States also so you'll have to be very truthful to the visa officer don't try to bluff and that's where they can make out and uh, you'll have to be very genuine and be truthful to the visa officers. So these are the small, uh, I mean, um, the strategies which you'll have to keep in mind and you need to really be confident enough while uh, facing the visa officer and uh, you'll, 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 you should uh, project that self-confidence in you, carry all the uh, genuine documents and please avoid any shortcut methods and always take the peer group help or maybe your seniors help or any professional uh, you know uh, consultants or it can be a professional uh, counselor so please do approach them for uh, further uh, guidance and as you know that you need to have proper preparation that's a must actually and uh, I'm sure uh, I've shared uh, uh, most of the uh, valuable information and uh, definitely I would like to take up uh, the questions part like questions what from the audience and uh, uh, if you have any further doubts, clarifications, I'll be happy to clarify. And uh, now I would like to definitely see the questions from the audience. <clears throat> Please feel free to ask me if you have any individual questions related to your specialization or program or university or or if at all any rejected cases and you would like you're you're planning to reapply for a visa. So if you have any technical questions as such, I'll be happy to you know answer your queries. Here there is a query uh, from Mr. Sai and um, his question is whether visa officer knows what are the admits we have been granted and uh, which are the admits we have been granted and also the rejects. In fact uh, when they swipe your uh, I-20 copy uh, definitely the visa officer knows how many other universities have granted your uh, granted your admission I should say so suppose let us say you applied for six universities and you've got almost three admits and maybe three rejects so but the visa officer will have only the admission information suppose let, let us say you've been granted in three universities 
but with regard to rejection no i don't think so the visa officer can track the information uh, about the universities where you have been uh, rejected uh, you know by that particular respective universities so but with regard to the admits and uh, the i20s from other schools yes the visa officer will definitely have the information he can track all the information so with regard to the universities where you have been granted uh, admits so the other query generalized questions like you know us education is it easy for me by saurabh popley so basically yes us education is very flexible and we have seen lots of students you know opting even today us as the their first destination even though there are so many other countries like canada australia and uk but obviously even today us is ranked as the number one education destination because 80% of world research even today is happening in united states and uh, if, if with regard to the number of uh, in attracting number of international students obviously uh, you know us is attracting even today highest number of international students so we strongly recommend students in fact to always uh, take it as a challenge and opt for us education itself because of the wide variety of courses the wide you know varieties of universities and uh, no, there are lots and lots of uh, you know universities so close to 5000 plus universities and colleges you will find in united states but you need to be very cautious while choosing the school where you'll have to go through with the uh, you know the accreditation part the ranking the standard of education faculty student ratio the tuition fee structure then again the location point of view the research uh, uh, happening over there so the, the, these are the main important factors while uh, you know selecting the university yeah here I have got one more query from Akshay and uh, <clears throat> Akshay has uh, sent a question saying that uh, uh, some important uh, yeah I'm sorry just yeah there's a question related to uh, visa interview tips uh, of course the tips are nothing but as I've already shared with some of the do's and don'ts where you need to be very confident you your answer should be precise again I'm repeating your answer should be very precise point-to-point -point answers are very much relevant and your answer should be unique and don't go for by hearted answers which has to be instant don't give any lengthy pause as such so be confident and uh, be precise with your answers I've got a uh, the other query from Saurabh with regard to scholarships I'm sure many Indian students are successful in getting a uh, uh, you know funding and scholarships wherein uh, for that you need to apply much in advance and as you know it's purely first come first served and uh, you will find wide varieties of scholarships based on academic uh, uh, you know merit scholarships are also being granted they do have need based scholarship they have non need based scholarships based on your uh, ETS scores but it all depends on how well in advance you apply but there are lots and lots of funding available the, followed by research funding followed by assistantships in many US schools actually <clears throat> And I have one more query from Pramod, and the query is, uh, can I get a visa if I go for ITM branch at Dallas without work experience? I don't have work experience. Apply for a visa. I think I'm not sure about this uh, question. It's not that clear. If at all you are going for occasional studies, then again depends on the duration of the course and uh, basically occasional education again falls under M1 category that you'll have to check based on the duration of the course, you'll have to check it. And otherwise, you, if at all duration is more than one year, then you'll have to definitely apply for a F1 visa. Then I have other query, the charges of visa, what is this? Yeah, the visa fees, I think um, one student has asked, again, that's $160 is the visa fees. Suppose if at all, unfortunately, the visa has been denied and you are reapplying for a visa, then uh, obviously, again, you, you'll have to re, uh, you know, reapply and again, you'll have to pay the fees of $160. We do provide uh, visa services to our students, wherein we do assist students in uh, evaluation of all your uh, financial documents and uh, evaluation of all your uh, visa documents, whatever you're going to carry and uh, we also provide um, admission counseling and we do help students in uh, 
visa guidance also in terms of uh, mock sessions and uh, you know so we we do have different uh, types of services you are most welcome to log on to log on to our website it is uh, www.valmikiedu.org it is www.valmikiedu.org and i've got a query from one student where his gre is uh, low he has got only 294 gre and uh, uh, he wants to know that if at all the visa officer asks for a particular reason that why did you get a lo low scores see i'm sure because the visa officer will be definitely uh, be concerned to know why is that you have ended up getting a less score uh, you know when you have a good academic background or when you have a uh, you know pretty decent uh, you know academic percentage so you will have to definitely give a valid uh, uh, reason for your low scores some students uh, in the past we have come across where the students have admitted that they've got a low scores and but the university where they have applied where they have been granted admission so they were convinced and uh, based on the academic backgrounds they have been granted admission and uh, followed by uh, you have to definitely give a genuine reason again it's maybe for the lack of preparation or you're working and you didn't have much time for preparation then you'll have to definitely admit that you know so you, you, because you, you had very less time for preparation uh, because you're parallel working and uh, you know doing a job or doing internship so that's where you didn't have much time to prepare for your GRE but again your answers have to be very truthful and there has to be a valid excuse please so then we have uh, um, one student, uh, Ria Tony, uh, with regard to the sponsorship, she again has a query regarding sponsorship. As I've already highlighted, that the sponsorship, the sponsors can be father, mother, and it can be uh, siblings, and it can be your grandparents also. But we res we advise students to restrict uh, the number of sponsors to three or four or max. Uh, you know five not not more than that actually so you 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 should restrict to not to have too many sponsors to be frank the the loan part the student loan is definitely not a liability as long as you prove that financially you're sound and you've got a strong sponsor where his annual income has to be pretty decent you know that's how they see and sometimes students will be asked the question that will you be able to repay the loan and uh, the, some students say with lots of overconfidence say yes I would like to repay the loan and all that's how the visa officers suspect that the student might involve with the employment activities after going to US so you shouldn't um, give that kind of uh, answers that yes I want to go back and I want to go to US and start earning and start working and start earning and I, I will repay the loan so that's definitely is not recommended as such and uh, you should your sponsor ha has that li liability to pay the loan but sometimes we recommend students not to show too much education loan as such so you'll have to balance it actually. So say if at all you have to show 25 lakhs as a bank balance, uh, sorry, 25 lakhs as a liquid funds. So maybe you can go for 10 lakhs of education loan and 15 lakhs of uh, maybe liquid funds in your savings account actually. So one student has got, uh, uh, Sai Kumar has got admit from uh, Texas, Dallas. That's a very good school. And uh, uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, the, the student has got a, Query. Uh, he has been admitted uh, Texas LS. That's a very good school, and uh, <clears throat> the tuition fee is uh, thirty-six thousand nine hundred dollars, and uh, seems to be extremely expensive. Yeah, if at all there is no scholarship as such. Otherwise, if at all there is an assistantship which have been granted, then definitely you can highlight those areas of uh, funding and scholarship, or maybe assistantship point of view. And uh, yes, definitely in your case. The visa officer will be more concerned about your finances because since the tuition fee itself is $36,900 into two years, that comes to more than, uh, you know, $75,000. So obviously, uh, you will have to really show strong, uh, you know, financial documentation in terms of uh, showing more liquid funds and uh, showing uh, education loan sanction and adding more sponsors. But that should not, as long as you are able to meet the you know visa officers expectations in terms of while showing the bank balances and all then that shouldn't be a problem as such otherwise even education loan also you can add and if at all the most important because UT uh, Texas Dallas has got lots and uh, lots of funding and scholarship I'm sure if at all you have been granted any funding and scholarships please do highlight about that part actually uh, the financial document one student is asking what are the financial documents required at the time of applying to the universities 
by Jishan Syed. Uh, uh, Syed, in fact, when you are applying to the U.S. schools, you will have to procure a bank balance certificate uh, stating that uh, you have uh, the relevant, uh, you know, the actual liquid funds uh, in the savings account. Say, for example, if you are applying for a master's course, and say uh, if you are uh, going to apply to some California State University. So maybe roughly say tuition fees $25,000 including living expenses are say $28,000. So obviously you'll have to show roughly a two years, uh, you know, liquid funds in the savings account. So you will you, even you can show it in the form of fixed deposits also. Yes, while applying to every U.S. school, you need to have bank balance certificates where your father uh, or mother should procure the bank certificates from the bank manager and you'll have to attach that bank bank statements along with your academic documents and application while applying to the uh, you know US schools actually then I have uh, one student uh, Kailesh Gupta the I'm glad to uh, see his question like I mean I'm glad to hear that he has been granted a, a scholarship of 90 percent and uh, uh, yes yes uh, he, he wants to know that can I highlight suppose if they ask me why did you select this university it is because of the scholarship. Yes, the, why not? In fact, that can be a very strong selling point. Suppose if at all you're going to say that yes, because this university has granted you a scholarship of 90%. But of course, the university also should be accredited, and uh, you know, preferably it should be a research uh, university. So then, definitely, the you know, more weightage, uh, you know, to get a visa. So I'm sure uh, it's a, it's a valid uh, answer. Uh, whatever the query you have, 90% scholarship, you can definitely highlight about your scholarship where you'll have pretty high chances of getting a visa because since you've already been granted 90% funding and it's just a matter of 10% uh, you know where you'll have to show the funds that means you don't require many more funds to be shown you can just show less funds itself and uh, yeah the common questions which I've already told you that uh, Sai Kumar has asked me a question that what are the uh, you know uh, the common most you know, commonly asked questions the commonly asked questions are why only US why only this university how many schools did you apply and how did you apply to these universities and how many admits how many rejects who are your sponsors and how are they funding your education so tell me about your course curriculum and uh, tell me about the uh, the future prospects for your specialization what you've taken up then will you be back to India when are you likely to come back to India then followed by the weather conditions, about the about your school safety, and uh, even the location advantages. Will you be interested to do part-time jobs? They'll see the, your seriousness in terms of part-time jobs are concerned, and they would like to know <coughs> mostly whether you'll come back to India or not. That's where you'll have to show strong roots with the home country also. Then I have uh, one student query uh, regarding distance education, uh, like ICWA. Yeah, there are many schools in US don't accept distance education certificates because they would like to give more preference uh, to the you know, direct students who have that too. as you know if at all you're a bachelor student you need to have 16 years of education in order to get admitted uh, in the top universities you should have a uh, you know 16 years of education there are very few schools who are accepting distance education but otherwise the top universities don't don't accept distance education and I have a query. <clears throat> I have one more question. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, one student again uh, asked me the question. Uh, sorry, Sai Ajesh Rajesh. Rajesh has uh, posed a question that uh, what will you do after MS? Again, it depends on student to student actually. Obviously, if the visa officer asks this question that what will you do after my master's? Suppose if at all you have, uh, you would like to even work in the United States on OPT, you are most welcome. You can always tell them that, tell the visa officer that after completion of my master's, I would like to work for a couple of years or it can be two years or three years on, on OPT. So you would like, you can definitely use your OPT opportunity optional practical training but don't try to lie or uh, bluff the visa officer that after completion of my masters I'll immediately come back to India and you know so where the visa officer will not get convinced actually so you'll have to be very truthful to the visa officer and uh, you'll have to be really genuine actually when you're facing the visa interview actually then I have one student uh, who has asked the question Let's see. 
Master, it's difficult to get jobs in USA. I mean, uh, this one student is asking more about the future prospects for civil engineering uh, courses, uh, and uh, he says that uh, is it difficult to get uh, jobs in United States? See, it depends on again what specialization in civil. We have seen students who have taken up uh, uh, um, maybe structural uh, transportation, and they, they are definitely pre uh, pretty doing well. Actually, I mean, they're they're doing a great job. Actually, so it's, again, it depends on which university. It depends on the ranking of the university. It depends on your passion and it depends on so but uh, definitely I don't think so that you know uh, you, you will really find difficulty to get a job as such as long as you really study well and focus on your uh, career goals and from a very good university if you, if you pursue your education actually. Uh, one student asked me the question that what should be a good score of, uh, to get admission in masters in aeronautical uh, and related uh, engineering so um, I've got a question from uh, uh, Kakore uh, I think the decent score for aeronautical engineering from the top school would be anything between 310 to 315 out of 340 in GRE and uh, the TOEFL score has to be a minimum of 80 but if at all you are aiming for top universities you need to have at least 90 plus 200 actually we do recommend for the English course then uh, Again, uh, the student has got one more repeated question that what should I tell the visa officer that, you know, after completion of my study, bachelor's degree, uh, what should I say? So what would, uh, they would like to do? So, I mean, uh, if at all you're, you're a 10 plus student, uh, Kailash, if at all you're going for, uh, you know, bachelor's course, you can definitely say that if at all you would like to pursue your master's, yes, you would like to even uh, take up your master's course also after completion of uh, bachelor's. Otherwise, you would like to even work for a couple of years and you would like to gain some international ex expert ex expertise why not you can confidently tell uh, you can confidently tell the visa officer that yes after completion of my studies and i would like to even work in us for a couple of years then maybe come back to india so that should be your, your answer actually then i have uh, one more question Ask uh, now the condition of bachelor's degree. What should I say there? Here is one student who got a scholarship of 90%. That is from Mississippi State University. Reason for selection of this particular university? Yeah, why not, uh, Kailash? You can uh, definitely give that uh, uh, relevant answer because obviously you are aiming for funding and scholarship on par with the even the university point of view. You have definitely selected a decent school. Uh, you know, Mississippi State University has certain ranking actually, and uh, definitely you can say that there's absolutely not 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 to get worried actually. So you you can be confident enough actually. Um, when should we appoint an academic counselor for helping us through an English process? This one student, Sai Kumar, has got a uh, query. Uh, Sai Kumar, if at all you plan for U.S. education, obviously you'll have to plan at least one year in advance. If at all you are looking forward to apply for U.S maybe now the fall intake is almost over now the next intake would be uh, the 2014 uh, Jan intake is available the, uh, if you miss that then one more intake would be on fall 2014 that is August September 2014 so you'll have to really plan much in advance then you'll have to appear for certain examinations the prerequisite test where we, where we will guide you and if you are from Hyderabad you're most welcome to drop in at our office or we can even provide you online services online counseling if you just log on to www.walmikiedu.org, you have all the information. So we'll be happy to provide uh, the the admission services, admission counseling. We'll help you out in selection of the right school and the right specialization, and uh, we'll guide you at every uh, you know step actually. Then I have uh, one student, Ajit Sharma. He has got to admit with full scholarship. That's a good news, and that's a good university, uh, Ajit. RIT is a highly ranked school. In fact, in the recent past, we have got close to uh, 10 to 15 visas. Our students have secured visas for RIT because of the scholarships. Even though it's pretty expensive, again, it depends on the amount of scholarship. But I'm glad to know that you've got a uh, you know full scholarship in RIT. So that's a great news. And please confidently go ahead and face the visa interview. I'm sure so you have pretty high chances to get a student visa. Actually, so please do not delay further. And just get an appointment visa date 
and just move forward and best of luck uh, Ajit then I have uh, other queries uh, sponsorship under there are some repeated repeated questions I think uh, I may use every reason no my question consider CMA for RMA sorry then I have Yes, Ajit. I'm glad that you got industrial engineering uh, specialization. It's a great uh, university. Please go ahead, and I'm sure you will definitely succeed in getting your student visa for five years. Then I have uh, spring intake. Is it true? It's also safe to apply. Yeah, I think our uh, Jishan Sayed has got one more query that most of the universities do not take admissions in spring. Uh, maybe yes uh, up to certain extent not all the universities do grant admissions for the spring intake that is for Jan intake there are most of the universities they open the doors for the international students for the fall semester that is August September but it doesn't mean that you should stop applying for spring intake as long as you have pretty decent scores and you, you are on time you are welcome to apply for spring intake too but you don't find that much funding on scholarships for the spring intake actually but there are let's say for example out of 5,000 schools there are close to 1,000 plus universities in United States are accepting applications for the Jan intake also so you don't want to wait for more than a year time you would like to explore for spring intake this is the right time to start your processing so you are welcome for any further guidelines through Valmiki group actually One student has got a query of non-US related, uh, mostly the East uh, and uh, Japan, China and South Korea. You would like to know the information. See, to be frank, these countries, only very few students from India are exploring actually. As you look at uh, the statistics, their highest numbers and thousands of students are, in fact, uh, you know, applying for, uh, you know, uh, student, uh, I mean, visas to US. Then right now, the highest numbers from India students are exploring is Canada and some students are obviously even the, the Australia is picking up some students even do explore uh, New Zealand Ireland then of course these days some students are also even applying for the German German universities because of the free education and uh, because there are a lot of top universities in Germany they have got a you know a free education system there are lots of engineering students and chemical background the pharmacy students are exploring German uh, universities these days because they are uh, getting a free education actually in Germany. So the students with high profiles, they must apply much in advance as the admission acceptance rate is very low. So you should really explore that actually, Germany. But uh, I'm afraid uh, Japan and uh, uh, Korea, I don't have much information. I'm sorry, but definitely uh, if at all you are going to explore the top institutions in Japan some of the top universities then I'm sure you can apply as long as your profile is pretty good and you have pretty high uh, academic background actually then I have query this one student uh, has got a query that's again uh, probably I'll take this as a last uh, uh, question uh, the student wants to explore the management courses uh, in abroad especially for freshers as you know in UK if at all you, you would like to explore UK yes uh, if you would like to explore MBA then you need to definitely have two minimum two years of work experience in order to you know apply for um, MBA courses in, in, in UK and mostly in Canada and US you don't require work experience as such but you need to go for uh, an, uh, a prerequisite examination called GMAT examination and the GMAT score out of 800 if at all you are aiming for the top universities obviously we recommend 600 plus otherwise for a decent decent score should be 550 plus 500 plus 550 plus should be fine and you should also go for TOEFL examination TOEFL has to be 80 or IL score of at least uh, say 6.5 bands and uh, you need to have 16 years of education if at all you want to explore for MBA and top universities Otherwise, there are some schools in US now. They started, uh, you know, accepting 15 years of education. There are some schools they have designed uh, pre-masters programs and pre-MBA courses are available. It's like sort of a bridging courses. You you can offer the two and a half three years of MBA also. But some schools are now accepting even 15 years of education for direct two years MBA also. So work experience, don't worry. You need not worry. 
but you'll have to really focus on getting a very decent scores of uh, GMAT and uh, followed by the TOEFL or IELTS score actually and uh, your academic profile should be good you must apply at least eight months to nine months in advance so that you can succeed in getting admission from the uh, you know uh, decent and top top universities thank you Sai and uh, thank you so much it was a wonderful opportunity for me to share uh, all the relevant inputs uh, with regard to F1 visa session and followed by general questions and I'll be happy to come back to you again and if you have any further doubts you would like to utilize our services you are most welcome to meet our counselors and uh, you can log on to our website and you can always get in touch with our uh, senior counselors thank you so much and best of luck for uh, all your future endeavors and those who are applying for student visas so I wish you a great uh, success thank you so much